Hey friends, welcome back. I recently upgraded my laser engraver to this Creality Falcon 2 Pro 22 watt laser engraver. Today I wanted to share with you all the things that I've learned so far. I wanna show you how you can set it up, kind of what you need, the pros and cons, and my initial cuts and thoughts for this engraver. The laser does come partially assembled. You do have to install the laser. You have to get all of these panels set and ready to go. It's not too much of a process, but it did take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna link a video in the top right corner that you can watch on the detailed setup of it. But what you just need to know is that you can commit to like an hour or so to get this set up and another little bit, you know, getting things set in your software. You will need a computer to run the software. You can use an SD card to run like one file at a time, but it's your best bet to have a computer. I use Lightburn while I'm cutting with this engraver, but you can use other different softwares. I will link your options underneath this video, but Lightburn really is like the industry standard when it comes to laser engraving. The main reason I wanted to upgrade my engraver was because I, I one, needed something that is desktop. So it's a little bit bigger than the one I had before. It will cut about 16 by 16, which is good enough for me. The one I had before, you could really only do like eight by 12 and it wasn't big enough for many of the projects that I wanted. I don't need anything big. I don't have space in my house or an area where I can have like a big industrial laser engraver. So this was perfect, a little bit bigger, big enough for what I need. And it has a 22 watt laser. One thing I really like about this printer is that it is a desktop laser. While the cut area is a little bit bigger and the printer is a little bit bigger than what I had before, it still fits on a desktop. You will need something that's about 23 by 23 at least to be able to place this on a table. I'll link this work table underneath this video. I actually bought it specifically for this laser. So I'll put that underneath this video, but I'm able to cut, you know, 16 by 16, which gives me a good amount of workspace as well as keep it on a desktop area which is good because i don't have a full warehouse or garage or shed to do my work in i really need to be conscious of the space that all of my machinery takes up a lot of the desktop lasers now are 10 watts so this is doubling the power that i had before it also does a nice balance between engraving and cutting and you can do a wide variety of materials you know wood acrylics you can engrave on leathers metals certain things all are capable with this engraver the camera is on top so it's not perfect it doesn't like perfectly light up which if you are new to laser engraving or you've had a laser before you you already know this but having it right on top is helpful especially if what you're cutting is right underneath it you can line it up pretty well at least a good starting point when you're about to cut your projects it's got a fan coming out i have it hooked up to an inline fan that i will share underneath this video kind of how i did that to help suck out the air it's got an automatic air assist so all you have to do is plug that in the side and keep it on but you can then tell lightburn when to turn it on and turn it off so you don't manually have to turn on and off your air assist you can tell it to run at certain points in your file and not run at others so it's really nice to have that automatic feature there are some safety features built in there's a key that you can turn off take the key with you so nobody can use it without that key in there there's an emergency stop button so if you get a flame or something goes wrong you can easily turn it off and it is fully enclosed so you can keep those fumes and things inside and go through um, venting out of a window or outside, whatever you have set up in your workspace. Overall, my first test guts turned out perfectly. Lightburn does take a little bit of time to learn, but I'm going to post some videos. You can leave any comments in the questions if there are specific things on Lightburn, but so many people have made videos to, on how to use that software, but cutting, engraving, wood, which is 99% of what I do worked really well. I'm still experimenting with my acrylics and getting those settings correct, but I'm really excited for this engraver. So that is the process of getting it plugged in and on. I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to walk you through some of the highlights on your software in Lightburn that you're going to need to go through in order to get set up. And then I'm going to talk about all of the different projects that I've done and my thoughts on the cutting and engraving so far. Once you get it all set up, you can set up your software. The first thing you're going to do is download Lightburn and get your camera calibrated. Your camera needs to be plugged into the computer that you're using. You're going to choose it in the camera control menu under laser tools you'll choose camera calibration and make sure you choose circles because the machine comes with this little piece of paper that has a bunch of circles on it and you're going to use that to calibrate your camera. The top image shows you where to place 
that little piece of paper in within your laser and you're going to press capture and you're looking to get like a score to so it tells you if it's in the right spot. So you might need to reposition it each time, but once you correctly ca capture that image, you can then just follow through the directions and move the paper where the reference photo is. You're going to go through this just to get that camera calibrated and then you have a good view of what you're working with. You don't really have to do this. Um, you don't actually need to use the camera, but it does help, um, especially if you know, you're trying to line things up. After that, it's going to take you through the alignment mode, which will um, engrave a few different corners and read it just to make sure that it is all aligned. So you're going to go through that. I do like to scale it down a little bit um, just because it's it starts a little bit big. So you can scale it to like 75%, you can frame it, and then you can actually get that going. It just takes a few minutes to get the camera set up, but it is nice to have. And once you have that, and you have your light burn all installed, and your laser connected, you can start cutting. All right, so now it's actually been a long time since I originally made that video setting it up. And now that I'm finishing up this video, which is a good thing because I have had a lot more time to test it and see how I really think this laser will perform over time. And the truth is I, I love it. It's working so well. I have been able to easily cut and engrave wood. I, this is the example I have right now. I can engrave good details and cutting has been very consistent, very easy, um, cutting basswood and pine wood with that laser. I've also tested some acrylic. Now, I don't think I will be cutting a lot of acrylic just because I do this in my house and it just doesn't seem safe to do that inside, but it's able to cut the black acrylic very easily. I was able to cut and engrave a few different pieces um, just testing different settings and I've al I also cut and tested orange so it was able to easily cut and engrave black and orange acrylic as well as all of the wood pieces that I have given it. I'm very happy with the speed and the accuracy and getting things going with this laser. Um, it has been honestly one of my most used machines out of all of my machines over the past few months. So, you know, size and all of that is really important and I do really like being able to use Lightburn. It just has so much more capability in terms of the design aspect and the cutting aspect from your computer. So I do recommend it. I've been really liking it. I've done, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of cuts now and I can confidently say that I recommend this machine. If you are looking to get a desktop laser, it is a diode laser, so there are some limitations, but for that desktop diode, this is a really, really great option. If you are starting to get into laser cutting, you're looking for a diode, let me know what other questions you have. I do recommend this Creality one for sure. Uh, this is my second desktop diode laser and I am loving the capabilities and the size. So leave any questions you have underneath this video. I'm gonna do a deeper dive in the setup and some of the actual settings in my next video. So you can click the next video up on your screen.